There's definitely some weird things in here too, like this little turnaround that's like the part just before the chorus. Hi, I'm Mark Ronson. Hey, I'm Dua Lipa, and we're going to take you behind the song Dance the Night. Don't you know about me? I could dance, I could dance, I could dance, dance the night. So Greta said she wanted a big disco number that was going to speak for Barbie's best day ever. So I had an idea that it was going to be something up tempo, but that was really it. And, you know, after three days, I tried a couple of different ideas and I didn't think I had anything that was perfect yet. And then they were like, well, can you just send us anything? Well, I was like, what do you mean anything? Well, I don't know, just like a click track. So I, I finally actually got a track that I really felt good about and I sent it in. And that was the instrumental, the, the very raw version of what became Dance the Night. Watch me dance, dance the night away. My heart could be burning, but you will see it. I know I was making it with Dua in mind. I was on tour last year, quite relentlessly, for a whole year. And I just got a DM on Instagram from Mark. He basically just reached out and was like, I'm working on this film with Greta. There's this big dance number, and I would love you to write it with me. I was so intrigued at what Barbie was going to be, what was it about. The next opening of dates that I had, I like flew to New York. We were also saying, we were like, oh, maybe we'll work a little bit on my album and then a little bit on Barbie. But Barbie just completely took over our life. Like, we were completely barbified. Like, there was Barbie dolls everywhere here. We were just putting post-it notes everywhere, trying to, like, brainstorm what Dance the Night was going to be. We worked on melodies for a right. while. We had, like, a little SM7 in the room. He'd already made the track that the cast were all rehearsing to. It's kind of interesting because usually when I work on something and I work on it from scratch, you, there's so much leeway to change bits, but we had to obviously stick pretty tight to what the score already was. So it was just a really fun um, jigsaw. When you start a song, what are you doing? You're just like going to a keyboard or a guitar or sometimes to pick up the bass and it's like the umpteenth million time I've ever tried to do this. How am I going to find four chords today that just feel like something I haven't done before? And sometimes you don't need brand new chords. Maybe you need a exciting production element. But Greta had referenced the Bee Gees a lot. We think of the songs as kind of like upbeat, fluffy disco, but a lot of the chords and the beats and the rhythms, especially on like Dang Alive era, like it's really tough. So I was sitting at that roads right there and I came up with these this chord progression. They're just kind of a little almost sinister and stuff and actually that's what I love about a lot of Dua's music as well. The chords are even though there's there's a disco element to it the chords are kind of like dark and moody. So with those chords and then I came up with this string line The chords and these French producers that I work quite a bit with, the Picard brothers, they take like old samples and then whatever I've played in the chords, they just change the, the, the samples to fix what I've done. So by taking this weird string sample that they had, they made this weird like that you hear. It. So I had the melody, but under it there's this sort of murky chord movement happening that then we had the real strings play live. So it really started with those things and then like most of my productions, the next important thing was to have a bass line. So on top of those chords you had... Then when we really went in and at this point we had a pretty good idea of the footage and we had it and we like fired up the TV screen here and Dua was on the couch and she just started freestyling lyrics as Margot was dancing and the part when I was like oh, this I got chills and I was like this is really going somewhere was when Margot does that thing and Dua was like oh I want to sing like come along for the ride right there. So we were watching it and then I just felt really compelled to be able to have like the lyrics really merge with the dancing and what was happening in the scene as well. So we like really 
fine tuned it every little moment. It's also like a moment where I go turn the music up and they're putting their hands up. And it's just like little bits like that, little details that I think made such a big difference in, I think, when people saw the film. Because Dance the Night came out before Barbie. So it was kind of like the first taste of what's to come. So it was a little bit of the story, the kind of happy, glitzy, disco element that Greta really wanted. Okay, so what is Barbie about? And what is the story going to be? And why is she saying this? And when people watch the film, then it all kind of matched up together. It was, yeah. it was just, it was very interesting to see people's reaction to both hearing the song on its own to watching it then with the film. Everything is played pretty live except for the drums, which I programmed and also did with the, the Picard brothers, so. I mean, some of the percussion is live. And that's the other thing that's kind of hidden in there as well. There's an acoustic guitar that's not the first thing you think of when you think of disco music, but there was just something about the strumming in it that just kind of kept it moving. But it's so layered underneath that it gives that really like beefy yeah. sound underneath yeah. with the bass and the guitar. It's yeah. all just like little sprinkles that make it. But there's definitely some weird things in here too, like this little turnaround that's like the part just before the chorus. So that's like three bars and then a bar of two, which is just like half a bar, which is a very unusual sort of structure for pop, but it just like felt good. So we just tried to work around it. Yeah, so this is the lead. Baby, you can find me under the lights. Diamonds under my eyes. Turn the rhythm up, don't you want to just come along for the ride? And then do a laid all these backgrounds under it that are sort of like whisper vocals, right? Mm. Baby, you can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. <laughs> Turn the rhythm up, don't you wanna just come along for the ride? Oh, my outfit's so tight, you can see my heartbeat tonight. I can take the heat, baby, best belief, that's the moment I shine. It's exactly, it's Barbie's inner thoughts. It's trying to show a brave face while there's some inner turmoil happening and like kind of getting a little bit confused about this kind of duality that's happening within her that was so unnatural for her at the time. To the human experience, it's the most natural thing. It's kind of like being able to move forward and progress in life even when things aren't going your way or that kind of optimism that you have to keep going with even when things aren't going right, basically. I think the thing that I really, really love is that weird murky string chord that's happening that almost feels like shifting plates, that this part that we were talking about. So it's this thing that was created weirdly from a sample that then we had the orchestra actually play live. So the kind of violas are going one way and the violins are going the other. And that just with the vocal even is like quite exciting to me. Watch me dance, dance the night away. My heart could be burning, but you won't see it on my face. Watch me dance, dance the night away. I'll still keep the party running, I want it. Far be it for me to say, but that's sort of the sign of like a good song and a vocal when you just can literally listen to just the strings and the lead. And I find it quite harmonically rich and actually fulfilling like that. I could dance, I could dance, I could dance. Watch me dance. The bridges actually was just a moment to step it down a, mm. a little bit because there was just so much going on through the rest of the song. I think you just wrote it just to the drum. There was, were yeah, no yeah, chords. Yeah, really, really simple. Even when the tears are flowing, they're diamonds on my face. I'll still keep the party going, not one hit out of place. I'm such a fan of, like, talky, chanty moments in songs. Like, I love when things have variety and they go up and down and it gives you a different emotion and a different feeling and it takes you away from, like, something that's so pop and big and then it brings you down for a second and it gives you a, just a different groove, a different way to dance to it. I feel like I love all that 
variation so much. So, and I love also the ad libs through the chanty bit that are the. Even when the tears are flowing, their diamonds on my face. I still keep the party going. That one hair out of place. And then the vocals is like a mixture of you and I think Caroline, and it has such like I'm an old guy, so all my references are kind of old, but it just reminds me of like the Jacksons. Just if we just solo it for a minute. When my heart breaks. When my world shakes, I don't play safe. Don't you know about me? I could dance, I could dance, I could dance, dance the night. It's a freestyle in the moment of like you hear something and you're like, All right, you know, you're gonna, you're about to crescendo into another big part of the chorus. So it's like, how do we lead into that? What are the little bits that you add into it? to join it all together to make it all that more special. It just gives everything like texture. And also I think that one you really just came up with live when you were finally in the, in booth, the booth recording. Like mm -hmm. we just like, they were all just so cool. And I think Dua just has like such a cool rhythmic, like it's like understanding when to put stuff in. So a lot of those were just ones like completely on the fly. And we were all like here in this room going like, <laughs> getting all excited, <laughs> like me, Andrew and Carolyn, you know. <laughs> There's not a lot of like, in different songs that we've worked on have had like different effects and maybe more like mm. modern things. This is just kind of just lets the instruments and the vocals do most of the talking. There is one guitar part that only comes on in the middle in the bridge. Even when the tears are flowing, their diamonds on my face. I'll still keep the party going, not one hair out of place. It was so exciting even the first time hearing on the radio and then going to see it in the theater. I remember having a really sweet conversation with Greta too because it was like the weekend the song came out it was like all over Z100 and all the radio stations that we all grew up listening to. She was like, I got so excited, but then I got sad because we've been working on it for so long and now it's out. Does it mean like it's over or something? You know, it's, it's all of these emotions, you know? Mm. I, all these things are still so exciting, yeah. It's so cool, especially like when you work so hard on something and you put so much love and time and effort into trying to make something really special and to see like your peers liking it and feeling like they want to vote for it and you know you get a nomination it's it's the best feeling mm -hmm.